Time now for the nationally syndicated radio show, The World of Lori Zook. And now, here she is, the smart, the sexy, the savvy, divine Miss C. And welcome to the show. I've got a big smile on my face today. I've got a special show lined up, all-star talent. I've got Steve Fowler, who is uh, who was the lead in the Starlight Express from Broadway, very well-known singer. I've got Ron Apria, sax man extraordinaire. He's got um, a tribute to John Lennon that's up for a Grammy this coming year. And his wife, Angela De Niro Apria, who is also a, a very well-known jazz singer. And we're going to do a show today about a former piano student of mine named Louis Castano. And Louis is also on the line. And the show kind of features Louis because I want to talk about Louis in this first segment. When Louis was a little boy, probably about nine or ten years old, he walked into the piano studio where I was teaching, holding up a Frank Sinatra book and said, I want to play Frank Sinatra. And I thought, wow, a, a little boy who even knows who Frank Sinatra is at that point well, Lewis, how how old are you now, Lewis? Um, I'm I'm creeping up on 27. Right, you're you're coming up on your 27th birthday, and I remember that first lesson. When I remember your first piano lesson, it means there's already some connection there for me. And so you started out. We started out uh, by teaching you chords, and you were able to obviously read music. I remember stories of you performing in school where I, I taught you something it was fairly difficult, and you said to me after the performance that the music blew off the piano, but you remembered everything by memory because you were accompanying a choir. And yep. so, yeah, you went on. You went on. We lost track for a few years, and I looked you back up. I typed in your name and. Whoop, up comes LewisCastano.com with a, a picture of you looking like Frank Sinatra with the fedora hat, the vest, the pocket watch. I'm going, oh, my gosh, he turned into Frank Sinatra. So I want to kind of fill in a little bit here. You went on to college, and what did you do in college? Um, in college, I studied at Montclair State University in Montclair, New Jersey. And my undergraduate work, I have a, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, and I also have my teaching certificate. Um, and I also got a minor in music while I was there. Right. So you not only play piano, you also play drums. You play percussion. Yep. I'm also a drummer and a vocalist. Right. And now you obviously still do Frank Sinatra. And I want to play an audio clip of you singing. So everybody hang on just for a second. If you can use some excitement just far across the way, come on and fly with me. All right, so now obviously there are, there are people around where you're performing, but when I listen to that, I go, wow, he turned into little Frankie. Now, Steve wants to jump in here for a moment because he has that story he wanted to share. Lewis, when I got out of service at the age of 27, uh, I started taking acting lessons. And eventually, I started working in nightclubs. And one of the clubs I worked in was called Ichabod's, after Ichabod Crane, the headless horseman. And I met a piano player that had gotten kicked out of Vegas because he was a cocktail or um, pianist for for the the family. I'll put it that way. And his name was Frank Gustanaccio, <laughs> Italian. And he shortened his name to Frank Gusto. Well, anyway, Frank used to play for Frank Sinatra. Okay. And the guys, after they would finish their shows and they'd be having parties and drinking and doing whatever they did, and he would play for them. And my friend Frank Agostinaccio had a lot of bad habits, and he used to look at me and says, how do you do it? How do you do it? You don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do drugs, you don't gamble, you don't do all those other things that I can't mention on the radio. He mm -hmm. said, how do you do it? I said, oh, I just do it. I just, that's just what I am. He said, oh. he just shake his head. But he was a marvelous, marvelous entertainer himself. He had hats for every song that he sang. And he taught me songs like, Che la luna mezza mara, mamma mia, ma da. You know, and yep. uh, and, and so, um, but I had learned Italian when I was in high school. I saw uh, a, a kid named Vinny Aquilino. He came up behind me. We was at the ICA Hall, 
250 Italians in there, and I'm the only Moulinian. You know, they call us Moulinians. That's a nasty word, uh, black squash. Anyway, I was the only one in the room, right? And so he says, Steve, don't worry about it. Just sing what I say. I, so he said, Femina. I said, Femina, du zila male femina, seto cecumi lamina, la creme ne famita. So I got a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked me, what part of Italy are you from? I said, it must be Sicily. That's closer to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you. Good, good story. Good story. Uh, now, Louis, I, I know you're working as a, as a teacher, but you do do gigs, you do do performances. What are you currently doing? Um, well, I currently, last month, I was fortunate enough to do um, a solo concert with a jazz quartet. There's a concert series at a church in Maplewood, New Jersey, um, called the Pop Concert Series, which stands for Performances on Prospect Street. So uh, their pastor there, Father Jim Worth, had me come in and do about an hour and a half of music, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then other than that, I guess my real outlet right now is is I do a lot of church work. Um, my faith is very important to me, but the, the opportunity to share those gifts in that kind of setting is, you know, it, it, it's nice to be able to do so and, and to give back. Um, but there's, there's no feeling like being up there and singing the standard. That's, that's one of my favorite things to get up there and sing. Gotcha. Now, if you could... If you could do anything you wanted, forget about. I know you, you love. I know you love teaching, but I really know that you are a performer and you have that talent. But if you were to do something musically, what would your dream be for for yourself? Um, I think that I would at least like to try everything once to see how much I enjoy everything. Um, I've had little experiences here and there, acting and musical theater experiences and experiences with big bands, um, small bands, um, singing in restaurants and things like that. And I think my, my goal would be to experience everything to say, to be able to say, wow, this is what I really like. Or, uh, you know, I, I do love being on stage. I do love live entertainment. So whether it's being in a show, uh, you know, a cabaret show or, um, a musical itself, um, you know, those are, those are things I really enjoy and, and things I would really like to do. Gotcha. All right, now I've got Ron and Angela on the phone. Now, one of the reasons I I, I ask them to join us on on doing this show for you, they have a son, and and either one of you, Ron or Angela, tell us a little bit about your son because he's also a musician and he's probably around Lewis's age. I'm guessing. Actually, he's going to be 26 in uh, in a few in a few weeks, and he just he graduated a few years back from the Eastman Conservatory of Music. He also uh, he also got his uh, degree in performance and education, which, uh, you know, I think is a pretty smart thing to do because you want to have something to fall back on. And he has done some nice things performance wise. And he's also on Ron's album, which is really a cool, cool thing. He's, he's uh, done a lot of recording and he has his teaching certificate and he teaches privately right now, though he is also looking for a, you know, permanent position teaching, which is a good thing to have. Right, and so I, you kind of see the correlation there, Lewis, in, in that I thought, wow, they have, they have a son who also went on, you know, they're musicians, they have a son who went on to become a musician, he's about your age. Um, Angela, Ron, t- tell me, is it, is it difficult, is it better for him because in some ways he has you as parents and he's connected, or does he have to do a lot of it, a lot of the, the footwork, so to speak, on his own? That's a loaded question, but yeah. I'm going to say that it's probably harder for him only because he's in a different genre. Um, you know, Ron and I are both in the jazz world right now, and we're big band, and we have different connections. Um, he, he started also, Louis, he also start, started as a pianist, but uh, took up the violin. And he comes from a classical background, and, uh, and he, he enjoys pop music also. And although he can cross over, and he, he reads well, as I'm sure you do also, um, it's just we have different, we're older, we're from a different generation, and uh, the connections we have are just not really pertinent to him although we you know our advice to him is probably going to be the same that we'll give to you today about you know networking and stuff right Right. and and lewis i'm assuming it's probably difficult if you're working a full-time job teaching to be able to go out to auditions correct because not everything falls on a weekend or you probably have to go into new york city a lot right and that's one of the challenging things that's one of the nice things about being in new jersey and being where i am in new jersey is the access to new york city but um, a lot of stuff happens during the day, and by the time I'm able to get into the city, it's 
you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock. So it's, it is difficult a lot of times to to get in and, and to do things, especially um, I have been doing some uh, print work as well. I know it's a little different than the music, but I've been doing um, a little bit of modeling and print work, and those auditions take place primarily in the morning. So, you know, to get in for things like that, I've had to put that on hold now that, you know, September started up and we're back in school, you know, September, October, November. So... Gotcha. All right. So the the audition part is is basically the the conflict part because I know when you and I spoke on the phone, I, I can tell if you had the chance to actually do the music professionally, I think that would trump doing the teaching most likely. Yeah. Right now, do you do any teaching yourself, Lewis? Do you have any music students? Um, I don't have any music students. Uh, a lot of times, friends and family will ask me um, if I'm interested in giving lessons and I always offer to sit down and work with a, a student or a friend um, but my schedule it's, it's very difficult it doesn't really allow me to have a steady student or keep steady students so it's, it's challenging okay gotcha all right well what I want to do I we want to take a quick commercial break when we come back I'm gonna ask uh, Ron Angela and Steve to just give you a little bit of information about each of them and their backgrounds before we go into this so don't go anywhere just stay with us one credit card merchant service provider in the industry, providing e-commerce solutions, POS systems, standalone terminals, mobile apps, and much more, call Central Payments James Carner at 813-777-4332. Looking for the lowest rates in the industry and number one customer service? Call Central Payments James Carner at 813-777-4332. That's James Carner, 813-777-4332. Do you suffer from back, neck, or body pain? Do you suffer from migraines or have jaw or face pain? Has conventional medicine failed you? Were you injured or in an accident? Call chiropractic physician Dr. Dan Maddock at 813-935-1664. Dr. Dan has helped thousands of patients gain relief for more than 30 years. Dr. Dan is caring, gentle, and takes his time with each patient. He's also a past president of the International Craniopathic Society, a special certification of only 300 chiropractors worldwide. Dr. Dan helps patients from the neck up and the neck down. Dr. Dan accepts most insurance plans. Don't continue to live in pain. Call 813-935-1664. 1664 today. That's 813-935-1664 and get on track to better health. Are you looking for an affordable way to advertise to thousands of consumers nationally? If you own a business and didn't think you could afford radio advertising, you need to call me, Lori Zook, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The World of Lori Zook. My show reaches thousands of people on 29 AM and FM stations nationwide, as well as through the internet. Additionally, your commercials will also be heard on my podcasts and throughout social media sites. Don't wait another minute. Call me at 813-777-4908, 813-777-4908, and let me bring your message to the nation and help you gain more exposure. Welcome back to the show. That was Louis Castano doing Brown Eyed Girl. So we're talking about how to help Louis. So what I want to do, um, let's actually start with Ronnie for you. Ron, I want you to talk a little bit about yourself, your musical background, who you are, what you do. Uh, yeah, I'm a saxophone player, uh, clarinet, flutist. Of course, I play the woodwinds as well. Um, I do a lot of arranging, writing, and I work with a lot of singers, actually, and I've produced probably a dozen albums with various vocalists. So uh, I'm sensitive to to the problems uh, of, 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 the, of the vocal world. Um, and uh, I'm listening to the conversation. And um, I see, Louis, you're in, you're in Jersey, which is pretty cool. Uh, we, uh, uh, we, we work in Jersey quite a bit. In fact, there's a jazz club in Montclair uh, called uh, Trumpets. 
and we're there with our big band uh, the last Sunday of each month. And uh, in fact, we'll be there again uh, on on Saturday with our small group. So we do a lot of a lot of work in in Jersey. So uh, maybe you come down one night and um, and and hang and, and check us out, and and we'll we can talk. Um, That'd be great. Uh, yeah, I'd like to meet you. Um, let's see a little bit about myself. I just produced an, uh, an album, uh, a tribute to John Lennon. I worked with John Lennon in 1974. We did a, a project together called Walls and Bridges, and uh, it took me 41 years, but I finally got around to doing a tribute to John. And uh, we just released the album in in, uh, in July, and it's up for a, a Grammy. And we have our fingers crossed. We're hoping that uh, we can make it at least uh, into the nomination phase. But uh, but that's what I do, and I do a, a lot of producing. I have a question: uh, uh, Have you recorded? Have do you have a CD out? Um, I've, I haven't made a full CD, but I have been in the studio and I've made several demos. Okay, I think it's important. Uh, anybody, whether, whether you're a, a saxophone player or a singer or whatever, uh, I think it's important to have a, 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 we, what we call these expensive uh, business cards, you know. But you really, you really need to uh, record, I think, and uh, and with the um, the access that we have, uh, you know, with media, with the uh, with the internet, uh, it's so easy to get your stuff out there. And I, I think that's probably the, the fastest way to to get you get yourself known and to uh, and to get yourself in, into the business that would be suggestion number 1 also there's a there's a, a room in Manhattan called um called the uh, the Metropolitan that that showcases uh, artists uh, mostly singers um it's a really beautiful room like and, sweet uh, waters um yeah I uh, like that. Um, and and I, I think it's a, a, a great place for, for people, uh, up-and-coming artists, to, to showcase their music, you know. Um, and I can give you more specifics, uh, you know, when we're off the air. But uh, but it's a great room, and uh, it's, it's a pretty place right in nice in central Manhattan. Uh, and I think you should probably check that out. That would be great. I give some advice to both of you. The one that's talking now that uh, is the arranger. Ron. Yep. Ron, you could help him out by putting a 90-second audition piece for him for Frank Sinatra so that he can uh, audition for the road show uh, uh, of the Rat Pack. It's playing everywhere nowadays. He's even playing on cruise ships. He can put a group together and possibly go out and do that uh, in a professional uh, you know, format. So um, you would be instrumental in helping help him play and sing uh, Sinatra music and have uh, have arrangements that would be uh, uh, of that, you know, genre of uh, professionalism, so. Well, I can help him with the arrangements. I can help him with the studio work because we do have our own recording studio here, too. So, uh, yeah, we can definitely uh, uh, see what we can put together for, uh, get, and get his career going. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, Steve, when we were on commercial break, you were mentioning something, the the dressers something oh you, you were talking about something i didn't know what it was but i thought it was something lewis should hear well for the one that's out in new jersey and it has a problem getting into manhattan try and join the dressers union that'll put you in touch with every broadway show and opera show that's in manhattan and it takes quite a bit to get in there and a lot of money to get in there but you'll be on the pulse of what's happening in the theater by being in that union and you can always go and audition any day of the week and then come back and do your job at the theater, and it pays well. Right now, Lewis, right. Lewis, yeah, Lewis is in New Jersey. So you would also mention Steve that at some point, if he really wants to pursue this, what he should probably have to move to New York City. Well, be close enough so that he can take the bus in or the train in for auditions, and uh, and always read backstage. And uh, what's the other big magazine that uh, has the pulse on on Broadway? Uh, forgot the not name. Ro- of it. Not Rolling Stone. No. Well, that too, that, but. Uh, yeah. No, there's another one. Um, it's a it's a paper, um, but uh, that's the kind of thing you have to do uh, to uh, to get familiar with what's going on. Because the dressers union, believe it or not, they have six months to a year advance notice of what's coming to Broadway. So yeah, so being in that union, like when when um, when um, Phantom of the Opera came in, it was like two years before they actually and. They were holding it up for a year because uh, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber wanted his wife to do the leading role. And they said, well, we got somebody that can do that that's American. He said, well, I won't bring the show in. So the dressers knew all about this stuff. In fact, John James was a friend of mine that I did Once Upon a Mattress with in, in community theater. And he was a hairdresser. He went out on the road with the, with the hairdressing for Dream Girls, And there's like 100 different wigs in that show. 
And it came back to New York into one of the theaters that was empty for a month or so, and then it closed. And so I met him. He came to my show, Starlight Express. And I said, what you doing, Johnny? He says, I don't have anything. So I took him over to Starlight Express, and the two hairdressers uh, that dress me, uh, uh, they both worked with Liza Minnelli, and they were her personal hairdressers and everything. And I introduced John James to them. He got a job that day. They were fighting over him to go to Phantom of the Opera or to stay there at Starlight Express. And the man's been working ever since. All right, so that that brings me to Connections. And I want to come back to you in a moment, Steve, because Connections for you was important in Starlight Express. Mm -hmm. I want to shoot over to Angela. Angela, tell me a little bit about what you do. I know you're a professional singer, you're a professional jazz singer. How did you get into it? Well, well, I have a degree in music also. uh, But again, it it was with a classical background. But I just, I'm I'm a big band junkie. And Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I've loved. Frank Sinatra, Louis, I'm a big Sinatra fan from uh, when I was a kid. It was always played in my house, and I loved it all his music. Um, so that was something I enjoyed. And, and when I got out of college, I, I auditioned for a big band on Long Island and got in there. That's actually where I met Ronnie. And uh, Oh, it, now you it, guys have to share that. I'm going to jump in here. You guys got to sh- share the quick story of how you met. I remember Ron telling me the story. This is another <laughs> way of connections, Lewis, but share that story. Sure well, this is a different kind of connection. But uh, yeah, I was in a, I was the singer in a, in a, in a big band. And uh, I think Ron had just come off the road with another band. Skitch Henderson's band, and he uh, got a call to just do a sub, and we met the first night at a at a, an affair, and uh, we started talking. I, I, I know what happened. I had gone to gone to a high school with a with a very wonderful saxophonist, and uh, when Ron was behind me, he was talking about his roommate Steve Greenfield, who on the show on this on the Skitch Henderson Skitch Henderson tour, and I turned around and I said, I know, I know Steve. I I I went to high school with him, and that was it. We ended up talking and uh we went out we had coffee and the rest is history so i have a question for you do both (laughs) of you know danny holgate and gail nelson i don't know danny holgate is a musical director and a um arranger and he worked for cab calloway for the last years of his life he also was the musical director for bubbling brown sugar don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope with Mickey Grant. They won Tonys for that. And the Hubie Blake Show. And, uh, and Gail was uh, Mitch Miller's lead singer for over 25 years. And they ended up getting married to each other. And uh, those are fine people for making connections in the business. And he's sponsored a lot of different singers and dancers. He, he knows Honey Cole and all of the other great stars stars from Broadway um, over his years. He's never had to advertise. His phone is always ringing off the hook for musical arrangements and stuff. So, Gotcha. Well, now, Steve, you, you just quickly share your connection to how you got Starlight Express. Well, Starlight Express happened uh, because of uh, Lonnie Staten's son um, and his wife, uh, Tina Satin, who was James Earl. No, it was Denzel Washington's acting teacher uh, before St. Elsewhere. And uh, I was taking acting lessons from her and her son went to London to see Lonnie, his father, do Starlight Express to play the role of Papa. And I auditioned for two years and eventually went head to head against his father for the role on Broadway. And I got it, and his father was mad at him, but I paid him a commission. So (laughs) his father said, I'm glad you got something out of it because they wanted him to come to New York to do it, and uh, and and he even goaded them to say, you're going to trust a show to a man that's never been on Broadway before? And Trevor Nunn, the director, said yes. <laughs> so. That's it, and you had to learn to roller skate. So we're, we're tra- the reason that I wanted you to, guys to all introduce yourselves is we're talking about connections because you guys have all made it. You've all made musical careers. You've all supported yourself you know, on your musical careers in one way or another. Um, Lewis... While he's got the double major and, you know, he's he's working as a math teacher, I think you guys can all hear he really wants to be the professional performer. Um, so let me start back with Angela for a moment. Angela, what advice would you give as to someone starting out? Well, make a ton of connections. You know, you have to remember that every you, you guys are in different worlds in some, t- in some ways. You know, if you're talking about show business or the jazz scene, they're different paths. Um, Ron and I were, were kind of you know, thinking about this before. And I think the most important thing is to kind of 
in your head, figure out what path you want to take. What is your dream? What, what, do you, what would be your dream job? Where do you picture yourself in, in 10 or 20 years from now? And it doesn't even make a difference if you don't get to that spot. It's just that having a goal in mind kind of helps you narrow your path as you're traveling. And, and that's really important to do. You know, um, that would be my first, my first bit of advice to him. What, what do you want to do? Do you like doing the jazz scene or the big band? Um, and it doesn't mean that you'll get stuck in anything. It just means that if you, if you kind of narrow the people that you want to make contacts with at this point, you can, you can focus on what you want to do. If that doesn't pan out, you can, or if, or if a new avenue opens up, you can travel down a different path, but start focusing, figure out who's, who are the people to know and where to go for that kind of thing and network with them and, and push down that particular avenue. Good advice. Now, Lewis, I know you're listening to all this advice. What, you know, I know you're talking about doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, just like the song where you're doing the, the, the modeling, you know, you're doing these different, these different gigs, you're doing the church. But if you had to put them in order, what would be your order of preference? I think that uh, being on stage with live musicians would, would be my number one. Um, and just performing the, the standards. I just love the, that, that jazz, the, the American songbook, those jazz standards. Lewis, if you want to do American Standards, there's one place you can do it for the rest of your life, and that is at senior facilities in any state. And some of them pay poorly, and some of them pay very well. And Sinatra is always a given <coughs> artist that people like to do in those senior facilities. And uh, the baby boomers are hitting them bigger than any other group right now, and they still love Sinatra too. So you could always pick up some extra work putting on a sh 45 minutes to an hour show for seniors. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Steve and I both know uh, Tony Milio. Tony Milio, and yes. And he, he does exactly that type of thing. And I do too. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And they love it. The greatest gift you can get is to go to a facility, sing your Frank Sinatra songs, and watch them. The all-time of patience that can't even remember their name, they'll start singing the lyrics while you're singing it. And when you get finished, they'll come up in their wheelchairs or in their walkers and thank you for singing that great music. It's a good gift. It's a great gift you can give to them, and the feedback to you is absolutely marvelous. Mm. Right. And I want everybody can to stay. Yeah. Go ahead, Lewis. Can I ask a question, Steve? Um, talking about doing that, do you self-accompany yourself when you do those things? Or Let do me you put it a, this uh, way. You can go on YouTube, karaoke, and download just about everything Frank Sinatra's done at the original tracks and sing to it. Okay. Okay? So you don't have to have a band or an accompanist or anything else because the budgets are small. But if you can make 50 to 150 to $400 for an hour show, that's not bad, boy. No, it's right, not. Right. All right, everybody stay with me. We're going to a quick commercial break. So we'll be back in just a second. Are you looking for an affordable way to advertise to thousands of consumers nationally? If you own a business and didn't think you could afford radio advertising, you need to call me, Lori Zook, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The World of Lori Zook. My show reaches thousands of people on 29 AM and FM stations nationwide, as well as through the internet. Additionally, your commercials will also be heard on my podcasts and throughout social media sites. Don't wait another minute. Call me at 813-777-4908. 813-777-4908. And let me bring your message to the nation and help you gain more exposure. Central Payment, your number one credit card merchant service provider in the industry. Providing e-commerce solutions, POS systems, standalone terminals, mobile apps, and much more. Call Central Payments, James Carner at 813-777-4332. Looking for the lowest rates in the industry and number one customer service? Call Central Payments, James Carner at 813-777-4332. That's James Carner, 813-777-4332.
Are you looking for an affordable way to advertise to thousands of consumers nationally? If you own a business and didn't think you could afford radio advertising, you need to call me, Lori Zook, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The World of Lori Zook. My show reaches thousands of people on 29 AM and FM stations nationwide, as well as through the internet. Additionally, your commercials will also be heard on my podcasts and throughout social media sites. Don't wait another minute. Call me at 813-777-4908, 813-777-4908, and let me bring your message to the nation and help you gain more exposure. Welcome back to the world of Lori Zook. I've got a, an all-star lineup with me today. Uh, Louis Castano, Steve Fowler, Ron Apria, and Angela De Niro Apria. And I want to share with you guys another little story about Louis. And Louis, you, I, I think you're going to remember this because do you remember when we did a, a, a concert at an assisted living home right after September 11th? It was in probably November, December of that same year? Yep. And you put together a patriotic medley of songs you were usually my i'm gonna say you're probably almost always my closer at the end of every concert because lewis played very very well he had his own style and i don't even know how old you were that i'm guessing maybe 10 or 11 you put together this patriotic medley and everybody in the place stood up they were all singing they were all crying they were all clapping and it was such an i'm just telling you it was such an emotional experience for me to see what you did for those people and so when you perform, is it, what is it that makes you love performing? Is it the emotion that you draw out of people? Is it the emotion that you put in? Is it a combination of both? I, I think it's the emotion that I elicit from people and the reactions that I elicit from people. And um, I can tell you right now, the, the recording that you just played um, is a studio recording. And I hear a huge difference in my studio recordings and my live recordings because I think I just feed off an audience um, so well, and I, I just adjust myself to the energy in the room, or I try and make the energy in the room match mine. Um, and, you know, I get excited about the music, and I, I want people to get excited. I want them to be inspired. I want them to enjoy themselves. I want them to forget about life and their troubles for, you know, the the half hour, the hour, the hour and a half that we have together. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, I live is... It's just amazing for me. Okay. Well, let me ask uh, Ron, Ron or Angela here. What What is important for someone in Lewis's position to have as far as a team? I mean, does he need a, a publicist? Does he need a talent agent? What is it that he should be looking for, or should he go it on his own? You know, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? I think it's, if you have the right people, um, what voice? We're, we're getting looping here. Uh, if you get the right person, if you happen to run into the right publicist or a manager, there's re- or booking agent, there's really nothing, really nothing better. But um, you mentioned something about the uh, the rapport you have with the audience and how that influences your performance, Lewis. And if that's if that's the reality of it, then something we were talking about before, you know, where you where you book a room, maybe like I, I'm, I'm just saying Metropolitan, any place would be good that you have control over the situation, get someone to come down with some professional recording, recording equipment, doesn't have to be hugely expensive and a good camera. And, um, you know, fill the audience with people that you love and, and you know, will will be supportive too. And then record a live performance and have it edited. If that's where you think you shine, that might be the best way to showcase your stuff. Because, um, like I, you know, like you said, you, you hear a big difference and I don't know, I don't know what you sound like live, what the recording you played sounded beautiful. But if you think that the quality of your performance is so much better live, go for a live recording and see what happens. Also, um, if you like spiritual music, like you sang or religious music, try and get a radio station to put you on the air on a Sunday morning, evening, afternoon, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour, whatever, so that people will know uh, and appreciate the type of music you're doing. 
That's a great idea, yeah. Yep. Now, I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to look at Lewis's website. I think I think the photographs are very professionally done. I think it's a nice, simple, clean layout. But one thing I would say is I think that he does need more professionally done recordings that, because even though his voice sounds great, you can hear all the background music. So what do you guys think of that? Well, I think Ron had uh, suggested that initially, that uh, our first... Our first uh, piece of advice is always to get the best recording that you possibly can because that's what you know you know how people's interest level is about uh, you know their attention span is about 15 seconds if uh, if they don't like what they hear in the first 15 seconds they're off and on to somebody else um, the social media the internet very very important tools they really are especially when you can't afford at this stage like you said it's hard for you to uh, to be working and to get into the city right away. So your calling card is going to be what people hear or see when they're on the internet or the clips that you send them, the YouTube clips, anything you can put on the internet and social media so that if you can't get there that morning, shoot them an email and say, look, this is me and can we, you know, if you're interested, let's let's get back and see if we can get a get a different recording, get, get a different audition time or something. If they want you, they'll figure it out. And, uh, and you've okay. got to... You've got to make that presentation strong, and, and, and it's got to be consistent with the type of performance you can, you can put out there. Now, Angela, when, when Lewis has his website, is it a good idea for it to open up? Like when they click onto his website, should it open up with music right away so that they hear him immediately, or is it better to let them go to where he has the audio? You know, is there, is there any real difference? That's a good question. Um, sometimes it annoys me when I click on a website and things pop up immediately, um, but I would... I would actually, what I would do is I would be searching for people who get a lot of work or whose websites you like. Look and see what they do. Right on the front, you should be able to click on something that downloads easily, whether it's a whether it's SoundCloud or whether you have your own video clips embedded in the in the thing, or you or you can embed a YouTube clip. Whatever you think is your best. Some people well, have it come actually, on immediately. Go ahead, Liz. I was going to say that's actually one of the questions I have um, is. Now everybody is recommending these venues for certain things. So for videos, they have YouTube. For audio clips, you have SoundCloud. Um, for professional stuff, there's LinkedIn. And I've set up all of these accounts, and I've created the same username across the board. So if people want to find me, they know it's Louis F. Castano, and they can find me on any one of these platforms. But my question is, is it better to have it centralized, or is now the website kind of going by the wayside where the website is, hey, just an introduction, now you can go and listen to him at SoundCloud. You can go and view him on YouTube. Or should, you know, I don't want the website to be too cluttered so people say, oh, my gosh, he's got 17 sidebar links. You know, I'm overwhelmed. I just want to go to SoundCloud and listen to him or well, something like that. Well, maybe right on your front page you put everything. You know, they have a they, – most web pages have a, a way for you to – they'll show the little bird for Twitter, right, and then the, the LinkedIn. Right. In other words, you, you do all your links. Um, you can put – a couple of links to SoundCloud. So if people have that short attention span kind of thing, they can go right there. But there's no okay. there's no harm in also including it um, on the web page itself for people who aren't who don't have that facility with those other sites. You know, okay. unfortunately, we're in that flux period where you've got an older generation of people, and I include myself in that. Who you know, we're still used to going to someone's website and getting the big picture then, you know, we're right. dealing with people your age and even younger who are just, you know, they're so, they have such a facility with all these different, uh, with LinkedIn, with SoundCloud, that that's the venue they want to be able to get to. So unfortunately, Lewis, my answer is you have to do it all and you have to be very creative about making a streamlined front page so that people that want to get it off, get off it fast can, but people that want to stay there and have a, you know, a one-stop place can be able to get everything on your website too. I think it can be right. done. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Okay. In, in business, I was always taught that your website, your Facebook, everything should link back and circle around all the other things. So maybe having the website as the main platform for you where everything comes off of that main site and you can list everything. Let me ask Angela another question, though, for example. Uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking here in advance. Angela, when it, since he's, you know, up and coming and, and trying to get on his way, if somebody's interested in him professionally, are they? Do you think that they're going to ask for a specific platform? Is he going to say, "Okay"? Do they tell them what they want when, you know what I'm saying? The person that's going to hire him, do they say, "Oh, we want to hear it on SoundCloud" or "We want to hear it on this particular platform"? Or do they just say, "Send me what you got"? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think it matters. I, Ron's just you know, uh, putting in information here too. And basically we agree with that. People just say, send me something, you know, Whatever. and you might be good at, at uh, just having a, a prepared draft email that has a YouTube clip on it, that has sound clip, SoundCloud clips on it, and a link to your website. You know, you have that, that template all ready to go. And maybe some uh, common uh, word, you know, theme writing, you know, some kind of a template for yourself as to how you want to present yourself so that you're prepared. You know, the people have, like I said, if they, they're asking you for information and it takes you a day or two to get back to them, they're off to somebody else and someplace else. If you've got everything set up and that little draft in your, in your email account that's got all those different things on it, whatever they're comfortable with is where they'll go. So put your website on there, put your SoundCloud links, put one or two YouTube clips, put everything there and, 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 and get right back to them. That's the most important thing is that is getting back to people when they ask you for something. And give them the best you have in the shortest possible time so that you Absolutely. get their attention and you don't wear them out with unnecessary <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And and then if you, if you strike a chord with them, then they'll look at everything else you have. But you have to get them within the first 30 seconds or so. And that's right. So be it singing, playing, whatever it is, give them your best. And hopefully something that they can identify with. Not less what you're doing is so rare and different that that's your calling card and you want to show them how different you are than everybody else. Well, well Steve, do they, do they typically, when someone wants to hire him, do they ask him for an actual paper resume where it lists all of his accomplishments or they don't even care about that? They just want to see and hear exactly who he is. It all depends on what they're looking for. And okay. so you have to know who you, who you want to be, why you want to be that, and what's the best material that you could give them to represent who you are. Right. Now, do those people typically care that he has an education in it or they don't even care? No. They, they just want to know how talented are you and do you fit the, the part that they're looking for? Right. Whether you look the part or you sound the part or you dress the part or you are the part, that's that's what's important. All right. Let's go back to the connections part. Should Lewis turn down opportunities? In other words, it, it, sometimes he maybe he's getting asked to play for free. And obviously he only has so much time because he, he's working as a teacher. Uh, but, I, you know, should he take pretty much any job he can get because it can expose him to other connections? I would say yes, because you never know who's out there. You never know who's listening. You never know uh, that somebody's been looking for you all their lives and all of a sudden here you are. And whether you got paid or not, Sometimes money doesn't give you anything in comparison to touching somebody's heart and life that says, this is the person I want to be involved with. Okay. Because they're unique as far as I'm concerned. So that you, you can't set up and say, if you don't pay me, I'm not going to do it. Now, Lewis, why don't you ask questions um, that you're thinking of? Uh, well, if we're talking about connections, do you find that, um, I guess, it might vary from circumstance to circumstance, but does, I guess every person in the industry isn't going to be willing to help you, correct? Correct. Okay, because I'm assuming some people are obviously just looking out for themselves, but there are people out there like the three of you, well, the four of you, sorry, Lori. That's The okay. four of you who are willing to, um, you know, take the time to, to sit down, to talk with me, to, to provide me with this advice. Um, I mean, do you find that there's more or less of one type of person? Are, are people more me-focused in this industry? Or, Well, the thing that governs your success or failure as far as other, people, other artists are concerned is this. Um, they could be extremely insecure, even more insecure with you than you, even though uh, they may have a lot of experience. Some people are frightened by other people's talents. And you don't know where they're coming from, but if they don't help you, it's normally because they're insecure themselves. But you won't know anything until you get out there and show everybody what you have. When I go to the grocery store, I'm singing uh, Nat King Cole tunes. <laughs> in the grocery <laughs> store. In the grocery store when I'm walking up and down the aisles or when I'm at the cash register. And, and a friend of mine who is also an artist said, are you always auditioning? You got that right. You never know who's listening. Right, yeah. right. That's pretty interesting. Angela, Ron, anything to add to that? Well, we had this conversation before, and uh, and that's everything you're saying um, is great advice, uh, especially about you never know who's listening. Um, what we've noticed about as far as how much to charge or what or whether to sing for free or play for free is it it really depends. First of all, if you don't have the time, Lewis, you know, like if it's if if you are so exhausted and so pressed for time. 
that uh, this would actually really run you down, then you just can't do it unless it's something, you know, I, th- I don't think they pay people to sing at the Super Bowl or the, the, the national anthem at different, uh, you know, different games and stuff like that. Um, if it's something that's going to give you great exposure or even small exposure, but in front of people that would be really meaningful to your career. Well, I say go for it. But Ron's opinion and, uh, you know, you jump in here about about playing for low or no money. And uh, we had talked about that. Yeah, um, well, I we're coming from different places, I guess, and, and, and certainly I, uh, um, my career is not just starting, so it might, might be different in my case. Uh, I think, uh, as Angela said, um, um, as, as regarding working for free, uh, I'm not sure um, that a lot of those uh, free gigs uh, do anybody any good except the uh, person who's uh, running them. Um, if it's a, you know, a big exposure thing, or whether it be... Uh, um, uh, a sporting event or a Super Bowl or something like that. Of course, you would do it, um, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm seeing uh, m- maybe maybe that free thing uh, getting um, getting out of hand a little bit, especially in the New York area. There's a lot of there's a lot of places uh, where you know people are working for the door and stuff like that, and uh, I, I'm not a big fan of that. I'll be honest with you. Um, um, you know, New York has stage. a bad habit of making artists work for nothing because they know the exposure in New York is second to none in the world. And uh, and the, the amount of people that might see you that do have some resources uh, will know you exist if you do work for free. But those you have to measure it out very carefully. You do, and you have to uh, and you have to decide uh, is is that is that freebie going to uh, in any way you help your career? If not, don't do it. Gotcha. Right. All right, I don't want you guys to go anywhere. We have one more segment. I want to talk about some more stuff. So so stay with us. Be right back. Central Payment, your number one credit card merchant service provider in the industry. Providing e-commerce solutions, POS systems, standalone terminals, mobile apps, and much more, call Central Payment's James Carner at 813-777-4332. Looking for the lowest rates in the industry and number one customer service? Call Central Payment's James Carner at 813-777-4332. That's James Carner, 813-777-4332. Three three two. Hi, this is Lori Zook, radio host from the world of Lori Zook. I was so nervous about getting tattooed, but after doing my due diligence and checking out companies and artists, I had my tattoos done by Justin Dubow of Suncoast Tattoos. He is knowledgeable and artistic, and he gave me a beautiful tattoo, and he put me at ease before, during, and after the process. I just love my new tattoo. Go get your tattoo at Suncoast Tattoos. Call them at 727-575-7935 today. That's 727-575-7935. Or go to suncoasttattoos.net. Our highly competitive and hectic world is fraught with dishonesty and challenges. Critical decisions must be made on a daily basis with accuracy when substantial assets are at risk. When you are confronted with a decision point involving opportunity and risk, consult with Sharpline Investigations, statewide experts in due diligence, investigations, and litigation support. Sharpline's professionals work with clients to conduct interviews, deep background investigations, and develop facts and intelligence related to litigation. When circumstances require confidential and expert fact-finding, turn to Sharpline Investigations, the statewide leaders in investigations and risk mitigation. Visit sharplineinvestigations.com or call 855-394-0042. Are you looking for an affordable way to advertise to thousands of consumers nationally? If you own a business and didn't think you could afford radio advertising, you need to call me, Lori Zook, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The World of Lori Zook. My show reaches thousands of people on 29 AM and FM stations nationwide, as well as through the internet. Additionally, your commercials will also be heard on my podcasts and throughout social media sites. Don't wait another minute. 
call me at 813-777-4908. 813-777-4908. And let me bring your message to the nation and help you gain more exposure. And welcome back to the show. Now, we've only got about three minutes to actually wrap up. So I first, I, I want to thank Steve Fowler. I want to thank Ron Apria and Ange- Angela De Niro Apria for being on to help my, my former student, Lewis. Now to gro- now he's a grown-up. Uh, you know, thank you guys very much for giving him advice. Lewis, we have time for one last question. So if you want to ask one question, I'll have each guest give you the short answer to end the show. Um. I guess this one's a little bit more directed to Ron, because I know you mentioned you were an arranger. I was wondering if you also write music, and, you know, to anybody else who's written music, uh, how do you get that out there? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. How do I get... How do you get your music... Uh, well, how, how, how do you get your music out to the people? Do you write for specific people? I mean, if you write a, a, a brand new jazz jazz tune... Do you? How do you get it out there? Do you play it with your band? Do you write it for somebody? Do you? You know, what do you do with it? Okay, well, um, it, it really, it really depends. If I'm writing something for for Angela, that would be a different story. If I'm if I'm writing for, uh, I mean, I produce people, and um, uh, they they come in here, and uh, we sit down and we work out, uh, you know, uh, keys and styles and, and this and that, and, and you know, and I'll put an arrangement together and wrap it around that that particular person's style, and um, and then we'll record it. And um, okay, original, wait a second. Uh, the, are you talking about original music? I don't understand. Yeah, it's original music. Yeah. Yeah, and we got about thirty seconds. Does he write? Do you write original music yourself? Yes, I do. I do yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, the advice yeah. I give to you is this: on if you're a writer, keep writing and writing and writing. Put it on YouTube or any avenue that will allow it to be exposed. And and if you have an opportunity to just sell it to a big vendor, sell it because. Uh, you need name recognition. So if nobody knows you're right in it and they haven't attributed your work to any piece of work, then, of course, you'd just be obscure. So write it as often as you can and sell it as often as you can until you get to be known. Great. All right. Well, thank you guys all for joining me today. I'll, I'll, I'll connect you all. You know, I'll connect you all after the show. Lewis, thanks. Thanks for, for doing the show today. Ron, Angela, Steve, I appreciate it because I think, yeah, I think thank you guys. Yeah, thanks you guys. Good luck to you, Lewis. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll be back next week, so join us then on The World of Lori Zook. Thank you very much for a lot of good years of To the Eye Man. Well, uh, and, and I would like to say to you, it, uh, it's been great. Uh, good night. <laughs> Thanks for the memories, but now, everybody, it's just get out. (laughs) Catch I Miss in the Morning, right here on the Tan Talk Radio Network.